through it all, despite the struggles, despite any blunders, despite any hiccups, the passing game has looked really good. First question came from my guy, Les Goody. He said, hello, engraving and team, keep it clean. Hope everyone is well and healthy. I'd like to hear your thoughts on our passing offense. I'm currently watching the Miami game live right now, almost at halftime. So we know how that went. Uh, but anyway, he said, and our passing game looks fire right now. Is this a sign that G-Roll is finally getting his act together, incorporating these plays more effectively? I don't know how much about Chris Hewitt, but is he the guy who needs recognition for a passing offense's success thus far? Take care of yourself and one another. And then later on, after the game was over, he said, like everyone else, I'm still in shock after how that ended. At least the Cowboys did us a favor against Cincy, I guess, with all the AFC North teams losing today. So, took the, uh, the good with the bad and the bad with the good. Anyway, um, yes. The Ravens, uh, that was my biggest question for the Ravens going into this season. It was the passing game. That was my biggest question. How was it going to be? Were they going to emphasize it? Were they going to continuously use it? Was it going to be effective? Were the receivers, how the receivers were going to do? Were they going to be maximized? How, how was that passing game going to look? And it has looked really good. It's looked really good. And, and I, 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 I absolutely love it. I adore it. I look forward to it more and more. It's just been a beautiful thing, a beautiful thing. Now, um, we just, and, and again, I always say how crazy it is that Greg Roman, the offensive coordinator, Lamar Jackson's our quarterback, um, and this is a Ravens team, but we got questions about the run game. We got questions about the running game. Yeah, the Baltimore Ravens? Those Ravens? What? Who? Who's that? Uh, questions about the run game. But again, let's. Um, it's very early. It's week two. Um, so let's see. Uh, in two weeks after the Bills game, because they will have had four weeks of film, four weeks of game, four weeks of everything. Then that's when I can really. That's in my opinion. That's when we can really start to tell. Who these Baltimore Ravens really are. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. So YouTube, team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs. First off, big shout out to the newest team, keep it clean channel members, uh, Gareth, Uvell, and Jay. Appreciate the three of y'all and just appreciate team, keep it clean uh, really as a whole. Now, next question came from uh, Philman. It said, thoughts on the Ravens loss. Hey, Raven, hope all is well with you and the family. Uh, this was one of the more interesting ways to lose a game. That's an interesting way to put it. So, usually I feel like the Ravens deserve their loss because of the slow offensive starts. Last year, Vikings, Colts, Steelers, Dolphins, LOL, and the other teams. This week, I think perfectly, I think, uh, uh, perfectly illustrated how we should run our offense. The running game was pitiful outside of Lamar, of course, but I'm not too worried because whenever J.K. and Gus are back, I think we can get back to uh, top 5 to 10 pretty easily. Some play calls I just don't agree with, like the fourth and one, and some of the random run plays we had, or even not getting Justice Hill the ball enough because he showed some promise. That part right there. Uh, ah, the defense, however. You could tell it was only a matter of time. It was going crazy with some of the plays allowed, even when we were up 21, because besides two of picks, they were getting down the field. I was kind of surprised how last year we were able to prevent a lot of Tyreek's deep shots, but I believe they had a bit more faith to not double team. The turning point was, of course, Marcus Williams' possible third pick of the game that was dropped in proper Ravens fashion. Uh, <laughs> my main concern with the defense is actually not the secondary at all, besides health. It's the pass rush. The pass rush sets up how much the secondary will have to deal with, and every time I looked at Tua, he was relaxed. How was Tua getting all those deep shots? Because we gave him too much time. I believe McDonald likes to try to get pressure without the blitz. But our guys just aren't that talented. I'm hoping with Ajabo and Jones, we can create some pressure and sex. And I truly believe this defense can be the best. That's why the Bengals are 0-2. The pressure of the Steelers and Cowboys was just too much. I know this was extremely long, but what are your thoughts? P.S. I would advise to keep a strong guy on Hamilton. Because Marcus Williams is already showing we have nothing to worry about on his side of the field. I like that. Um, and yeah, pass rush is extremely important. Extremely important. And Ravens just have such a lack of depth there right now. 
Um, now I'm recording this on uh, it's Wednesday. Uh, I was about to say July. Wednesday, September 21st. Um, and it's early in the morning right now. It's 7:15 a.m. Um, you know, so when I, I went to sleep and I woke up and I was just up. So I'm like, you know what? Might as well do questions from stuff. But anyway, beside the point. Um, they brought in JPP for a visit yesterday, but he left without a deal. Maybe by the time you see this video, they'll have brought in somebody else for a visit and maybe signed them. We'll see. Um, but yeah, they need help there. They need help there. Um, and you got like with the guys that you have coming back, um, they're coming back from injury. They're coming back from injury. Uh, and so you don't know. It could take them a couple weeks to really get into that football shape once they do come back. Uh, so I don't know, man. Um, it, it is a lot of uh, it's a lot of pressure right now on Houston and, and Adafe uh, away. So um, Ravens got to find an answer, a solution to that pass rush soon, or else this long season is going to get even longer. Well, in regards to the last question, actually, th this long season, if they don't fix the pass rush, it could get even shorter because <laughs> playoff time, that pass rush ain't right. You're going to be at the crib watching the, all the playoff games with the rest of us. But anyway, uh, next crest question came from my guy, Chris. He said, how to make the simple complex? Question, if we knew Tyreek Hill was a deep threat after all these years as fans, and then in the Miami game, he scores a touchdown on MP Juice Man on a goal ball, how do we let Tyreek score again on another goal ball? Why is it so hard to have a safety over the top? Is it simple or are we just making things complex? Where is the game awareness from the players and coaches to say, no, I'm not getting beat deep? Maybe the Ravens players and coaches didn't respect to his arm strength, so they didn't prioritize the deep ball. Please engrave and make it make sense. I, I can't make that make sense because it's, it is such, such something so simple. Like, yeah, it, that's Tyreek Hill. That's Tyreek Hill. Why would you not have help? Why would you not continue to have somebody over the top? Why? With him one on one with anybody, mistake, mistake, mistake. He's one of the best in the game for a reason. Next question came from Shantae. He said, "Yesterday's heartbreaking loss." Hey, Graven, hope everything is good with you and the fam. I haven't sent a question in a long time. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, but after that, yesterday's loss against Miami, I felt that I had to send one. Actually, I have two. My first one is: Do you think Lamar is too nice for his own good to tell Greg Roman no on some plays sometimes? Um, I don't know. Cause it just depends on how much he audibles and changes stuff up. So that, it all just depends. But anyway, he said, the reason I asked is because on the Ravens' second possession where they went for the touchdown on fourth down, Greg Roman called a QB run play. I thought that was the dumbest play I have ever seen on fourth down for any team. If it's fourth and inches, I understand. Not to mention he kept calling the play for a couple more fourth downs before, a couple more downs before fourth down. Uh, Lamar had to know it wasn't the best play to be called. I fully believe if the Ravens tried to punch the ball in for a touchdown another way, they would have won the game. Even if they kicked the field goal. Um... So, yeah, it's just uh, you just don't want the obvious stuff. And and then there could be times with maybe even with Lamar where he feels like, no, nah, I, I, I could get this. I could make this happen because a lot of times he has made it happen. But it's just it, it got to be more situational awareness from everybody. Lamar, I mean, he obviously knows he's on the field. Man, my offensive line, they ain't run blocking like that. So not that you want to even doubt yourself, but you got to recognize, like, man, these, these boys, I love them, but they ain't run blocking like that. So – do I really want to run behind this offensive line? Uh, and then G-Roll got to be like, hey, man, these boys, they ain't blocking for the running backs. They ain't blocking for Lamar. Do I only really want Lamar to, to run it up the gut like that behind this offensive line? So anyway, uh, he said, number two, why do you think the running game is so bad? Do you think it has something to do with the certain running backs that are taking over for J.K. and Gus not being used on the field much? Uh, because Justice is not the number one or number two running back, and Mike Davis was not the number one in Atlanta. Or do you think the O-line just can't move people when it's a run play? Sorry that this email was so long, but I had to get some frustration out. Thank you for reading this email. You and your family have a blessed day. Appreciate it. And I appreciate y'all, too. Um, real quick side note before we get into the second part of the question. We can't always answer every single email that gets sent. Um, we try. We really, really try to answer all of them, but it's just it's impossible to answer every single one. Um, so I appreciate y'all being patient. I appreciate y'all still sending them. Um, so thank you for that. Just had to give y'all a quick little shout out. Um, but as far as the running game, uh, I think it is the offensive line. Um, but then it, it, part of it could be actually the quality of the running backs too. That could be a part of it. But I think uh, the biggest one is the offensive line. Um, 
because they just haven't been many lanes. Haven't been many lanes. Um, I know Justice Hill, he sort of, sort of missed an, an opportunity uh, in the Miami Dolphins game to get even more yards on a big run. Um, but, I mean, why not have him out there? I, I wouldn't mind if they started him. I really wouldn't. He been in the system the longest. He been around these dudes the longest. Why not? What's what's the worst that could happen? Obviously, that would be before J.K. came back. And even if J.K. came back, because I'm sure with J.K., they ain't going to have him just be, all right, J.K., you all be one. Go take off. That'd be nice. Um, but I'm sure early on they're going to have him on a pitch count. They're going to ease him back in. They're not just going to throw him out there like that. So might as well start Justice Hill. What was the worst that could happen? Next question came from my guy, Makai. He said, what's up, Engraven? I saw something come across my timeline after this game, and I think it's a really good point. Lamar and the team also kind of had the same sentiment after there being 15 games left in the regular season. I personally trust our defense will get back to being the top five defense our team expects us to be. What do you think? And keep up the great work. Appreciate it. Um, and what he saw was uh, on Instagram. And it was somebody, a Ravens fan, they said, all I'm saying is the last two games our defense was fully healthy. We held Derrick Henry to 40 yards and Josh Allen to 10 points. That's without a top five deep safety, by the way. Uh, I'll give Mike a little more time, but comparing ourselves to our last two healthy games isn't helping his case. Um, I'll give Mike a little more time, but comparing ourselves to our last two healthy games isn't, hel isn't helping his case. Um, so yeah, the, the defense, no, they weren't completely healthy. Uh, obviously not. Marcus Peters was out the first game, uh, and this is first game back and then Marlon Humphrey you're dealing with the groin injury this game, but really the defense is never going to be completely healthy. Kyle Fuller's out. So boom, there you go. Defense will never be completely healthy. Um, Tyus Bowles will be coming back a job. one day we'll see, but you got to adjust. You got to adjust. Your team, your team is never going to be completely healthy. There's, there's never going to be a season where it's like, oh, man, we, we didn't have anybody on injury reserve at all. We didn't have anybody get hurt. So it's important that the coaching and the players that are playing, that, that everybody does their job to the fullest because there, there's no excuses. Next question came from my guy, Josh. He said, I I'm just going to be honest here. This loss was one of the least heartbreaking for me. I get why it's a big deal. Don't get me wrong. We got a new DC starters on a pitch count and rookies learning lessons. I'm not upset because no one um, can in good faith say Lamar can't throw. He's a complete quarterback doing it with a supporting cast that no one believed in. Uh, the run game has, <laughs> he said the run game has brighter days ahead uh, with JK and Gus eventually. Uh, get the old line worked out and the defense on the same page and watch out. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it was a tough game. It was a crazy game. Um, it was a fun game, but Ravens lost. Um, and it was just wild how everything unfolded uh, just slowly. It was like the slow pain. But, um, yeah, it, it happened, and it was what it was. Um, and I, I've seen some people compare it to, like, the heartbreak that they felt for the AFC Championship in uh, 2011, the, the Billy Cundiff miss. And I was like, oh, no, not for me. Nope. I don't think it was even close to that. Because it's a completely different atmosphere, completely different game. That was a playoff. That was a, that was a game to get to the Super Bowl. This was a game to get to week three. Offensive strategies. Next question came from my guy, Rick. He said, I ain't even first time writing you. Hope you are doing well. I'm from Germany, so part of my English here and there. Uh, not talking about the Dolphins game and the defense for now. <laughs> okay. That's cool. Uh, I was wondering why the Ravens don't implement a Chiefs style offense. I thought about it for a long time now. Lamar can play like Mahomes. Uh, he can even do more by being faster. Kelsey equals Mandrews. Hardman equals Duvernay. Dobbins, Drake can both be used like Clyde Edwards Elia, while Drake generally should get more passing targets. Yeah. Um, and don't forget Justice Hill, too. Then. Uh, but anyway, he said in detail the shovel pass. Lamar can throw all the angles, and it's a good short yardage option we do struggle with lately. You know, I never thought about that. And that Ravens don't, they don't ever do that. I don't even really think they did that with Flacco either. That's a really good point. Man, something so simple, but something that could be so effective. But that's also, that's not a screenplay, but it, no, nah, it's not a screenplay. Um, but it, it kind of reminds me of it a little bit because uh, how you just quickly dump it off to, to the running back or a receiver, whoever you're doing the shovel pass to. Um, but I know that, yeah, the way the Chiefs do it is so beautiful and just the way that they set it up and design it is, it's just a beautiful thing and it can be so effective because it can catch teams off guard. Um, uh, but anyway, he said, bring, bringing Duvernay in the backfield as a Ravens version of Hill or Hardman, even if we don't give him the ball, it should have the opposing defense guessing. See with that, 
I know that they, they did all the jet sweeps. We remember Duvernay was a jet sweep king, but now he's been used more as a receiver, and he's been doing uh, a good job of it. So I've been like, okay, Duvernay. Like, he, he's been impressing me these past couple weeks. I'm like, whoa, okay. I appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, uh, so they could, they could do that, but I, I like them using him as a receiver. Because uh, they did all the gadget stuff with him over the past couple of years. But now this this new Duvernay, yeah, I'm with that. He said, number three, using the Chiefs RPO. Um, yeah, Ravens got their own. But, yeah, I guess they could do that. And he said, if we can combine the Chiefs style with the stuff that's already working, teams won't be ready for all the same looks we give them. We could also combine the plays used by the Chiefs with our personnel to make it more Raven-esque. Best wishes. See, it sounds like you want the Ravens to move on from somebody and hire Eric B. Enemy. The Evolution. Next question came from my guy, The Solution for Kicks. He said, yes, we are all licking our wounds from that devastating, shocking loss to Miami, but there's a silver lining to be found in that loss and the Jets game. Is this the evolution of the Ravens offense that was alluded to last year? I know you have been chanting for a proven young veteran free agent wide receiver to come to the Ravens, or if they would have traded for one. Um, but like, like I've been saying, if, if they weren't going to trade for one, I, if you're going to roll with the guys who you got, even though they did add Demarcus Robinson, and he's helped. But if they were going to roll with the guys that they got and not get one of them guys that's like that right here, right now, an improving guy, all right, well, maximize them. Show us what these guys that we got have. And they've been doing that so far. I mean, James Proche, he been hurt. I mean, in the first game, he was only out there for a couple of snaps, so he didn't really get nothing. But then he was out the last game. Uh, so we'll see what happens with him. But we've been seeing Bateman. Uh, we've been seeing a lot more Duv as a wide receiver. Uh, they've been using Demarcus Rock, so yeah, they've been doing. Tyler Wallace ain't been out there too, too much, but they're top three guys. They've been doing it, so I love it. Anyway, he said, "Well, it's clear that that's not happening as far as the Ravens getting another receiver." He was talking about. Uh, as of now, Bateman and Duvernay are showing the media and even you that they can get it done. The addition of Williams, who has exceptional speed, is a concern for defenses. Williams, Williams, Williams. You, you talking about uh, Robinson? I think you're talking about Demarcus Robinson, I think. But anyway, because um, he said Williams. But anyway, he said defense, is, defense view Bateman as a chain mover with good speed, but he's showing don't press me or you'll pay. <laughs> I like that. We still haven't seen Prochet's reliable hands or Wallace's toughness yet, and that's because of Likely's ability, which appeared in this game, sans that drop. Ooh, yeah. He'll get there, though. He, he, he'll, he'll get there. He's progressing. It's only been two weeks, so yeah, he'll get there. I know a lot of people like they they like oh likely uh, blah but he'll be fine anyway. However, the Ravens are showing what used to be a massive strength is now a glaring weakness, and that its once vaunted run game is so far toothless. I'm not sure if the return of J.K. or Gus will help fix this. Uh, the goal is not to run Lamar as much as he's clearly showing he's capable of carving up and bombing defenses into a submission if needed. In summation, the Ravens are currently a big play passing team out of necessity, but it is sustainable if properly invested in. Love it. Next question came from my guy, Javo. He said, should we sign JPP? I think they should, but he left without a deal, so I don't know what's happening. And talk to Seattle about trading for Sidney Jones. Um, that's the cornerback, ain't it? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know much about Sidney Jones' game, so I can't really say about him. But JPP, whoever's going to be, yes to somebody because they, they need help uh, in the pass rush department. And they just need depth there. They need more bodies there. Bad. Next question came from my guy Dominic. He said, what's up in Graven? Hope everything is well. Sorry in advance. This might be long. I just left the Ravens game. Oh, you were there. Ooh. Uh, and I have mixed feelings about it. I've seen that the Ravens did have a plan for the Dolphins cover zero defense, but our defense didn't have an answer in the fourth quarter. I noticed that we did go on to center more, so I guess that's a positive. And we were uh, able to get open on one-on-one -on -one matchups. But once again, we couldn't run the ball. We were able to pass, though, and that could lead to the offense gaining momentum in the running game down the road. Teams will continue to stack the box for the first four games until our opponents realize that you need to respect our pass game. I, I think they will, but hey, we'll see. Uh, defense was solid until the fourth quarter. I, <laughs> I think they forgot Tyreek Hill was on the Dolphins. Uh, Tyreek killed us in the fourth quarter. I don't know where the safeties were. Uh, I think this game falls on the defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald. Uh, the first two games in the air, teams were throwing all over us, which is starting to look like last year so far. My question is, what were you disappointed in during the Dolphins' comeback, and what were the key takeaways from the game that you had enjoyed? Sorry for the long message, but I had to get it off my chest, and just like Ty Tyreek Hill on the second touchdown catch, I'm out. Mm, mm, mm. I, um, as far as uh, what was I disappointed in? Um, just, again, the, the lack of adjustments. Uh, the team just getting stagnant. Um, the lack of urgency 
uh, especially on defense, to, to, to really stop the Dolphins. And credit to the Dolphins for doing their thing. Um, but just and the, la- the lack of situational awareness uh, by the Ravens team. It's just a bad look, lack of situational awareness. But uh, as far as what did I like, what did I enjoy, uh, obviously the passing game. Passing game for sure. Um, Lamar, his big touchdown run. Um, yeah, so I, I appreciated the offense putting up all the points that they did. Devin DuVernay with his kick return. I appreciated the Ravens for putting up all them points that they did because that's that was a beautiful thing to see. Next question came from my guy Howard. He said, what's happening in Graven? I will give my assessments of the Miami game in the comment section of your post-game thoughts video. Right now, I want to touch on the topic that I also wrote about last season and pertaining to the Ravens' offensive line and lack of push up front in the running game with our backs. We literally don't have any maulers up front to knock people off the line of scrimmage at the point of attack. When our running game was dominant, we had big maulers like Orlando Brown Jr., Tyree Phillips, DJ Fluka moving people at will. Ronnie Stanley's been out, and we've just got a line full of lightweights except for Morgan Moses, who's listed around 330 pounds. I believe our first-round center is not even listed at 300 pounds, and we've seen how he's been pushed around these first two games. Sorry about the long rant, but it's been a while since I sent an email. It's a question from subs. Just, wanted to, just want to know your thoughts on my rant. Oof. Hashtag Ravens Nation. Um, yeah, I remember you did bring up that point about the Maulers. I do remember that. That was a while back. Uh, so, yeah. Um, we got to hope Ronnie Stanley could do it. Uh, but Ben Powers, um, we'll see. We'll see about him. Because um, you still got Ben Cleveland. He could be one of them maulers. Um, but we just got to hope guys get back and guys get healthy. And, yeah, Ravens just really start pushing people back. As far as Linderbaum, yeah, he is a little bit smaller. Um, but we just got to hope with him getting pushed around these first couple of games, we just got to hope that that's just – him being a rookie, be him being a rookie center, him having to take on all that responsibility, uh, and him just adjusting to the NFL. So hopefully he'll get there. Next question came from my guy, Manuel L. He said, how's it going, man? Hope all is well with you. I know it's early in the season, but my honest opinion on Patrick Queen is that we have to move on from him now that he has some value. He's just not the answer middle linebacker. Yes, he's got speed, but he misses a lot of tackles, and he's, his covering skills are very questionable at times. The only reason we still have Bynes is because they don't trust him at all. Just my opinion. Let me know what you think. Thanks, and have a great day. Uh, that, that part about Bynes is spot on. It was spot on uh, because they, they, they just they kept and keep on bringing him back. They keep doing it. And that shows like, yeah, you, you don't fully trust uh, Patrick Quinn. I don't think Bynes was just a depth move because they try to get Bobby Wagner. Like if, if you set, I understand trying to make uh, your team even better. But if you're set at inside linebacker and you feel you're set at inside linebacker with the guy you got, you ain't going to try to go out and get no Bobby Wagner. Because you're going to have to pay significant money to go out and get a Bobby Wagner. But the fact that you tried it, that lets us know. That let us all know, like, hey, oh, yeah, we don't trust Patrick Queen like that. Um, this is a big year for him. 15 games. First game was great. First game was his best game ever as a Raven, I think, against the Jets. Next game was like, ooh, okay, yikes. But so, again, it's been just two games, though. So hopefully he can have more games like the first game. And no more games like the second one. Next question also came from Manuel, but this time Manuel, why? He said, what's up, Engraven? I have a message for the Ravens. Stop being cute or trying to look cool when you're winning. It costs us the game. It costs Lamar's revenge on the Dolphins, and most importantly, a game that could have been a tiebreaker. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're winning by 42 or 50 points. You keep going until the game is over. I hope you take this L as a lesson and not a lost one. I know it's just week two, but if we're starting with these bad habits now, then down the line it'll cost us more in, than in the playoffs. Uh, P.S. Lamar just showcased uh, in this game he is worth 300 mil at least. I would recommend EDC start saving money for that check. Well, Bashadi, really. Um, yeah, man. I, I uh, This is why I always respected um, the, the Patriots in that undefeated regular season that they had. Uh, because they were racking up the points, running up the score. Some people got mad like, oh, why are they doing that? It's not sportsmanship. No, 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 no. It's, there's four quarters in a game. You finish the whole game. You don't play and get up at three quarters and be like, all right, we're going to chill. No, you continue to put up points. The lesson learned. Next question came from my guy, Gold Morano. He said, what's up, Engraving? It's up to you to keep our spirits up after the loss to Miami. You're always a positive force, and we need every ounce of that uh, cheerful, positive energy that you bring more than ever now. <laughs> Surely by now, EDC and Bishotti have learned a lesson that having elite receivers can transform an average quarterback into a Pro Bowl and Super Bowl contender. We watched Tua morph into, well, Patrick Mahomes. What's next? State Farm Insurance commercials? Yes, I know it's only game two, but we know that had the Miami quarterback been playing with the same offensive personnel as last season, the chances of our defense holding them to under three touchdowns in the fourth quarter greatly increases. Uh, if EDC refuses to trade up in the draft to swipe a top two receiver because he values a larger quality of uh, memorable bust uh, over fewer short thing players. 
Uh, who changes the outcome of the games? Then he needs to be much more creative in finding an in-season trade partner, meaning he's got to be willing to part with uh, something that he values in order to get something worthwhile. And man, yeah, um, elite receivers do make a big difference, uh, as, as we got to see firsthand on the wrong side of that. But um, and because uh, Tyreek Hill, like, yeah, killed the Ravens. Jalen Waddle killed the Ravens. And yeah, that's that's helped too a lot. And this is a big year for two. Um, now with the Ravens, Rashad Bateman, uh, we talked about it last year. He he had it was so far so good, um, but now we just I talked about going into this year. We just needed to see consistency. We've been seeing consistency, um, so hopefully that continues. And hopefully, because um, I don't expect him to to do anything at receiver during this season. Um, off season, it just depends on the, how the rest of the season. Goes, But he said, um, unless there's a diabolical in-house plan in place not to equip Lamar with the most dynamic wide receiver weapons possible for the intent purposes of ensuring that he throws fewer touchdown passes and yards per game, robbing the young QB of all his contract bargaining leverage. Nah, that couldn't be it, right? No way the brass would sabotage the season and Lamar's chances for success just to avoid paying him market value, right? No way JK is being held back for reasons other than health concerns, right? Well, I like how he left that off with a little bit of... Those real questions that you, they really make you think sometimes. But I hope that would not be the case because I think if that were the case, if the Ravens were really sabotaging Lamar to, if, if, to try to not pay him as much money as he wanted, in turn, they would really only be sabotaging themselves because he wouldn't go for that. And the last two questions came from my boy Flirt Nowinski. He said, what's good, bro? Back again. Hope all is good with you and yours. Don't you think it's funny? Everybody hated Wink for not passing now because he isn't running. Uh, realistically, I'm gonna need um, every everybody to calm down. Our defense isn't gonna have three straight breakdowns on defense every week. We were in cover two ninety percent of the time. Those plays, the safeties bit Williams and Hamilton. I'm sure they will never do it again. But yeah, overall, can you really be mad? No, it's any given Sunday. Wink and TJ uh, looking cool up in NY, ain't they? LOL. And, and like Williams and Hamilton was when they were supposed to have deep halves. I'm out. <laughs> Man, he's crazy. He said, oh, and I pray to every guy we know that uh, we don't rush anybody back. Because of that loss, we are good. We need them at full strength. It's a long season. Peter shouldn't have been playing in my eyes. Um, Jalen Alma Davis did okay. He's a rookie. He's going to take his uh, lumps. Same with Pepe. But they can only get better as they play. Also, them two are hitters. All right, I'm out again. And, yeah, that's true. They will only get better uh, with time and, and, and over time for sure. Um, and he also said, uh, quick question, on that play where Lamar was scrambling and I seen him stop because he saw a lane and then the, uh, the seen the flags fly and double pumped and threw it to Likely, do you think that's why he didn't take off because he thought it was a free play? Yeah, 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 for sure. I, I, I completely forgot about that, uh, that that was a free play. Um, but yeah, I think he was just like, you know what? Free play. Let me take a shot. See what I can make happen. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Shout out to Graven.